nights were filthy rich. Now, of course, there were the exceptions, okay? So, obviously, when we consider the knightly class throughout the entirety of the Middle Ages, yes, there probably were some knights who, for some reasons, fell and into bankrupt and didn't have much money. But this would be the exception. The majority of knights, they were rich. And I'm not talking wealthy. I'm saying they had a lot of money. It's sometimes to the point that we can't even comprehend it. Now, for example, um, let's have a look at the late 15th century, one of those beautiful full plate harnesses that I have recently made a video about, if you're interested, on, on who can make good full plate harnesses and, and, and armor for you. Um, link in the description below. But if you look at these, well, one of the things is that when you see a historical reenactment in our day and age, and quite a lot of people actually ask, you know, like, well, that's an amazing sort of armor you've got there. Of course, I don't, but I'm just saying, people say, uh, when they see pictures, for example, and then they often ask, how much is that? And when you talk about prices, so you say, well, 15th century full plate armor can range from $11,000 to $30,000 to get a proper set made and um, tailored for you. Then a lot of people are like, wow, that's crazy. It's super expensive. And yes, given <laughs> it is an expensive hobby, isn't it? But then some people ask, they're like, it did happen to me. They're like, well, so knights had so much money to spend. And that is when the situation gets interesting. Now, actually, that price for a knight would have been like super cheap, like easy, not a problem. You're going to make a full suit of armor for the equivalent in medieval currency of $30,000. No problem. Okay, mate, um, I, mate, can you bring my change, please? No, really. Here's the thing. Um, this price is considering modern technology. So, modern technology, the availability of steel, the availability of materials, and all the different things that allow us to make these amazing suits of armor, um, has decreased the price exp exponentially. So this is an actually amazing cheap price that at the time wouldn't have been possible because full plate armor, it's amazing, I love it, but now it's like super old technology, isn't it? I mean, we're talking like five centuries old. But for the night, it would have been the equivalent of modern day stealth technology in airplane, okay? The American stealth planes, that sort of stuff. It was the best technology could provide for war as far as defensive equipment is concerned. The very best. So when we talk about a really good 15th century foot, uh, full plate armor, the prices range from, and I didn't make up this, pr this, uh, this price, okay? I am actually citing, uh, quoting, sorry, I'm quoting Dr. Capwell, Tobias Capwell, and yes, He's badass, okay? If you think I know history, well, I'm, I'm nothing compared to that guy when talking about armor and battles in general. He is a real amazing expert. Now, the number he came up with is that he estimated that a full 15th century full, uh, full plate armor would cost uh, the equivalent in dollars of between $500,000 to $3.5 million. Where is the armor that can get me the armor for 30,000 again? So this is what I mean. Imagine a knight who is going to war and he needs to purchase a full suit of armor and he spends, well, one million dollars, the equivalent of one million dollars, of course, in his own currency. How much money does he have to be able to do that? But, but if you think about it, I mean, knights, they had castles. How much money can a castle cost, okay? And never mind the big villas and mansions that some people live in. I mean, a castle built with medieval technology, it's incredible. And, you know, it's... You can understand, you can start understanding um, through military history the enormous gap that you had between the nobility, uh, royalty, for example, and the common people. So knights were expensive also to deploy, and this also helps us understand why, if we look at the Battle of Agincourt, for example, uh, one of my favorite battles uh, as far as the 14th century is concerned, um, if we look at the Battle of Agincourt, for example, we can start understanding why Henry V uh, deployed so many archers. Um, and the reason it's not just because, well, longbow men, they are really cool. In fact, he, he won the battle because he slaughtered the French, and so he deployed them because they were effective. But no, it's not just that. A long bowman is much cheaper than a man at arm and considerably cheaper to deploy than a, a knight. They were not cheap, I'd like to underline, they were just cheaper. 
So with the same money you could deploy more men uh, if you deployed uh, long bowmen uh, instead of deploying men at arms or knights. Although I'd like to underline, during the Battle of Agincourt, knights and men at arms were both deployed from the in, in the English front. Okay, it's not a lot of people think that the Battle of Agincourt is the French had all cavalry and the um, and the English had all bowmen. But the reality is that the French had cavalry and only used the cavalry, although they also had crossbowmen, but they didn't use them for because they thought that they could completely destroy the um, English forces. But the things didn't really pan out that way. And on the other hand, the the English did have a lot of archers, and I think one of the reasons is this that they were cheaper to deploy than the others and the other kind of troops. But they also had there was a considerable number of men at arms and knights and if they hadn't been there uh, for example protecting the uh, the archers uh, etc the battle might have gone differently so it's not just archers loads of archers shooting okay there were also other troops but the reason why I say that it's good to deploy archers in that case instead of men at arms because archers they could uh, they were multifunctional an archer can shoot a bow but he can also fight hand in hand and some of these archers were actually very well equipped uh, some of which did have basically the same level of armor than a man at arm okay um, because again they were professional soldiers they had been doing it for a very long time and some of them they were actually quite wealthy and they could buy not as wealthy as a knight of course but they could buy good armor at least in fact you do have archers during that battle with complete full plate legs breastplate helmets gauntlets as well which of course they wouldn't wear while they operate the bow but you know if the troops are coming closer um you might as well you know just lose remove the bow and wear the gauntlets although please remember that that would only happen if the situation really gets to hand-to-hand -hand combat because you can and most of the times you will shoot a bow point blank in fact that is exactly what a lot of archers were supposed to do and that's what we see when, when we understand when we look at medieval iconography that archers mostly were used to maximize damage and in order to do that you needed to shoot the the opponent from from the closest distance possible because if you shoot from very far away and it, it doesn't work as well also because you can't be as precise and remember if you shoot a full plate French uh, a full plate armored French knight in the breastplate it's not gonna do anything even at point blank so never mind from distance and again the shooting on the air I've already been criticized a lot because I don't think it was done but I still defend my point and reiterate that I don't think it was done and most of the shooting would have been in you know towards the front if not looking down considering some fortifications some hills um, and it, so the idea of shoot them from shoot in the air and have the uh, arrows rain uh, and shower your opponent is not uh, is not historical in my humble opinion I still defend that point because even if you look at the construction of some bassinets for example you see that they are optimized for um, arrows shooting direct shooting okay countering direct shooting and I was very happy to read uh, to see I actually watched recently a video from scholar gladiatoria where both Matt Easton's and dr. cap will um, discuss uh, the Battle of Agincourt and and I was very pleased to see that they were saying a lot of the things that I had said myself in another video beforehand um, where I sort of talk about uh, Lars Henderson and, and I mentioned this idea of I don't believe that you would actually shoot in the air but I think you should either point blank or anyways direct shooting and I was very pleased to see that they also said that because of course if Dr. Capwell said no the people the archers shoot in the air like this I'd be like okay sorry guys I'm wrong because I mean he's the you know but the fact that you know he came with he came to, I I should say I came to the same conclusion as the doctor really made me feel good about my point and I'm like right so it is like this most likely of course with history then you can't always you can you can never be hundred percent sure but considering the fact that iconography never shows the idea of shooting in the air considering the fact that it, it, it is mentioned that some of the knights in the French army they were shot in the face from point blank and therefore they actually were lowering their head and you don't lower your head if you're, you're, if you're getting at you know if you're getting uh, arrows raining on you and, and also the idea of bassinets being exceptionally good at deflecting arrows that come from from either the front because of the muzzle that it has or the top because they are quite pointy it would make no sense to shoot like that I strongly uh, defend this point and even more so uh, after having seen that a one of the best um, incredible 
greatest experts on, on Arma that I know and I also own his book and I think it's fantastic and I have a video review on the book from Dr. Capwell on the on Arma, English Arma, and you will find a link in the description below. And then I even more so more fiercely defend this point. So yes, all of this to say, knights were very uh, rich probably even more than we had considered. All right, Noble Moss, but I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember that I make content daily and I am preparing a full documentary which will be released on the 30th of this month on Patreon for all those who support me with at least a dollar a month. Also remember that with one dollar you can also have access to the other uh, documentary that I made last month that I'm not going to remove anyways. So at the end of the day with one dollar you can access loads of different a lot of content and I am starting to publish even more often on Patreon too. Always making sure that I keep the um, the amount of videos on on the channel on YouTube untouched so that you can also watch the content that you like for free. Thank you very much for your support and remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. <laughs> Goodbye.